Welcome to part three of my interview. Keep watching to learn how Novus can help you improve your bedroom performance that you just can't get by using the Phoenix alone. So you invented the Phoenix, or sorry, you helped invent the Phoenix. <laughs> you tested it in Novus, um, and now you can get the Phoenix anywhere. Yes. Why should someone come to Novus? when they have the Phoenix? That's a very good question. I get that question all the time. Um, what I like to tell my guys is that there is a standard protocol and I actually created the protocol for the Phoenix specifically. But when you come into the clinic, I don't follow that protocol. We create a customized protocol based on whatever the issue is. So, you know, for instance, I saw a patient yesterday and he has Peyronie's disease. But the Peyronie's, I've been working with him for quite, you know, some time. And the Peyronie's kind of um, is in a different area than what it normally is. So for him, you know, specifically, you know, the amount of pulses, the energy, the tips that I'm using, everything's a little different based on what he's feeling and what I did last time and what I think he needs this time. So if that makes any sense to you guys, for each patient that walks through the door, it's not just kind of like you turn the machine on, you walk away and that's it. Mm -hmm. And I kind of feel like that's kind of what the Phoenix is and I did that by design because I didn't want these guys, number one, to hurt themselves because obviously there is no medical supervision. They're doing this by themselves. So I had to do or create a protocol that was you know, safety first. I wanted to make sure these guys had safety and you know i wanted to know too these guys are able to use the phoenix you know every 36 hours so i had to remember that that i know guys like to think more is more more, more is better, better. <laughs> and i know that so that's why i had to create the protocol the way i did when you're coming into my clinic i'm the one or my nurse is the one doing the actual treatment so i'm able to use more pulses knowing that you know, if I need to see you in a couple days versus a week, we have that flexibility. I was, I was gonna ask, if some guy walks in here and he says, I have problems in the bedroom, help. Yeah. What would you do? Well, first of all, I wanna talk to him. I wanna know what's going on because what I always tell these guys is there's three reasons why you have problems in the bedroom. One of them is your plumbing. Plumbing is your cardiovascular system. That's blood flow to the penis. I'm sorry to tell you, but as you age, the plumbing goes bad. It just is what it is. And there's nothing you can do about that. Like you can't go to your cardiologist and get a stent placed in your penis. Like it doesn't work that way. You know, they'll put you on cholesterol medication to try to help lower the cholesterol. But again, it's not going in and like rotor rootering it. So that's what I like about shockwave therapy is that it's actually cleaning out that microplaque but it's also creating new blood vessels. So it's like, here's your chance of getting more blood vessels, new blood vessels, new tissue, like basically a new penis. But then there's a second reason, and that one is chemistry, hormones. You know, I don't know if you guys know this because I feel like every time I talk to them, they don't. <laughs> but women go through menopause at the average age of 52, plus or minus five years, okay? Men start going through what I like to call manopause at the age of 35. Here's the difference. Women go to bed one night, they wake up the next morning and they're in menopause. <laughs> Men just have a slow, gradual decline. So what happens is they start to blame things on things. So they'll say, oh, I just didn't get enough sleep. Oh, I didn't work out. Oh, I'm just stressed at work. Or, oh, I'm just super tired. When really it's their hormones that are starting to decline. And then what happens is their testicles, you have something that's called Leydig cells in your testicles, they begin to atrophy. Usually it happens around 50 to 60. I've seen it younger though. I've had some guys who kind of poop out around 45. So once those atrophy, they stop making testosterone. Just like when our ovaries atrophy, they stop making estrogen. It's no different. It's just two different hormones. So these guys have to remember that. And that's important because testosterone helps increase nitric oxide production, which is a vasodilator. Right. And then of course, there's the third reason, your brain. You guys are in your brain all the time. 
If it fails one time, that's actually gonna create something called post-traumatic stress disorder, believe it or not. And so every time that you're getting ready to go have intercourse again, that memory is recalled. And so now you're having this performance anxiety that things aren't going to work. So that's where I'll refer patients to a sex therapist, which we have here at the clinic. So, you know, when these guys come in, it's not simple. It's not like one-stop shop, right? It's what's going on? How old are you? What are your medications? Are you a smoker? How long have you been with your wife? Is this a new girlfriend? So there's all these questions that we have to ask and kind of know what's going on, which is what makes it different than the Phoenix. Yeah. This is how I customize it. What is your favorite moment you've ever had here at Novus? Oh, gosh. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many favorite moments, believe it or not. I can give you a couple of them. Give me one. Give <laughs> okay. me one. Well, if we're talking about Shockwave in the Phoenix, yeah. um, what I notice is that these guys walk into the office and I like to call them my Eeyore. They literally look like Eeyore from Winnie the Pooh. Right. And by the third or fourth week, they're no longer Eeyore. They're standing tall, they're laughing, they're joking, they're smiling. They have confidence again. You know, they're able to perform again. Like they just, they have life again. So to see that transformation just it touches me. It makes me know that, you know, my work is doing something great. <laughs> What's next for Novus? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we are since uh, we're uh, co-inventing things with John Hoffman. We're in the middle of inventing some other very cool um, things, which I'm not really sure I can talk too much about, <laughs> <laughs> but um, that's gonna be on the horizon. And then of course, for me, I really enjoy seeing these patients with autoimmune disorders and patients who really wanna get healthy and wanna get off their medications. So as much as I love the sexual wellness part of it, I want to treat other people too and, and I want, I just want people to know that like you don't have to live your life like this, you know? I know that our bodies are supposed to start deteriorating once we go through this menopause or menopause, but you know, quite honestly, modern medicine is keeping us alive until we're 80, 90, 100 years old. So technically we're living in these dead bodies for 50 years. and. I don't know about you, but I don't want to live in a dead body for another 50 years. So why would anybody else? And really that's why I'm here is I, I want people to enjoy their lives. I love that. Well, that's all the time we have today. Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. And um, yeah, if you guys want to find out more about Stephanie, you can read all about here at the novuscenter.com. Thank you. <laughs>